Good morning. Uh, my name is Jakub Hajduk. I am former graphic designer and former web designer. I am also a senior front-end developer. And with those two powers combined, I'm the design system expert uh, in a PGS software, and I really enjoy it. Uh, welcome to uh, my talk. And uh, today I'd like to tell you uh, about things to know before you start your own creating uh, before you start creating your own design system so you probably heard of design systems and uh, you even may thinking of creating your uh, creating creating one yourself uh, and the chances are that you may have a plan how to do it and how to start it but hold on for 20 to 25 minutes and let me tell you uh, what things you can consider before you start Either you are CTO or CTO or developer that wants uh, to save time or designer that needs consistency, consistency uh, consider th these things before starting. Uh, so we will go through uh, these five points. We'll start with defining, defining what design system is. Then we'll think of uh, how our products are relates to each other's. Uh, next, we'll think of users of your design systems. Uh, then we'll think of several options. How can you start? And in the end, we'll uh, think of skills that you may need in your team to create a design system. Our products are solving more and more complicated issues. Uh, products are scaling up to enormous applications uh, and the software development pace is uh, constantly increasing. And uh, we can still for, we still can't forget that in the middle of this uh, everything there is a user and uh, we do it all for him and this is why we care about user interfaces user experience uh, accessibility uh, so to keep up, to, to keep up with uh, shipping perfect uis we also need a solution like this like design system and to be sure that we are on the same page uh, let's talk about what design system is so as Wikipedia says, uh, a system is a group of uh, interacting or interrelated elements that act according to a set of rules to form a unified whole. So there are two main parts of uh, this, you know, this definition. The first one is uh, are the elements of the design system, but I'll get to it uh, in a second. And the second one is a uh, unified whole. In our case, uh, in our product, in our design system, uh, we understand unified whole as a unified, consistent, visually consistent and consistent, consistent in terms of, of experience uh, user interface. So let's get back to the design system elements. Let's say what kind of design system elements we can have in our design system. There are such elements as a brand book. This is basically kind of a brand's user manual. It tells you how to use your symbols, colors, uh, tone and voice, uh, and lots of other things. Uh, there are also guidelines. Uh, we'll tell you how to use elements, components uh, to keep everything consistent. Uh, there are guidelines for designers, guidelines for uh, developers. There are even guidelines for marketers. Um, another uh, design system element are design tokens. Those are basically so-called uh, design decisions which then can be exported to different uh, environments, to different uh, development formats. Next, we have libraries. Uh, and I mean all kinds of libraries. There are uh, libraries for designers, like the design kits, like Figma UI libraries. There are libraries for uh, developers, like component libraries for different frameworks and so on. It's a basically set of reusable items, uh, either those are assets or components. Yeah, for example, we can also have a library of design tokens. Uh, next thing are patterns, uh, like best practices, like solution to solving certain already known problems. Um, even data, number or currency formats. And last, but definitely not least, in fact, it's one of the more important thing uh, of the design system is the documentation. Uh, 
for the whole design system as well as for the each element separately. Uh, so we know what design system can consist of. So let's see what are the goals of the design system. Obviously, uh, the most important uh, and most obvious uh, goal of the design system is to uh, keep the user interface consistent uh, so that user that uses your final product can be sure that uh, he's still in your application, he's not uh, escaped it somehow, um, and you, he can focus on his task instead of wondering if his uh, work will his work will be safe if he click this button uh, under goal of the design system is uh, to improve the design process and this happens because uh, designers have their libraries uh, of the components of the elements each time they are producing new view they don't have to reinvent it they don't have to reinvent any of the controls any of the components they are just using the same components as they have. This way they can focus on a more important things as a user experience in general. Uh, another goal is improvement of the shipping views on the development side uh, because developers uh, are having same libraries as the designers uh, although they have like development uh, libraries but they are synchronized one-to-one uh, -one, at least should be and if they are getting the mock-up, the, the prototype, they are pretty sure that the element that the designer used should be the same element that they have in their library. So they are able to check the properties and reuse the component. And this way, these developers can focus more on the performance of the application, uh, keeping right state of the application, and they don't have to redo each control over and over again. Uh, our goal of design system is that uh, we're improving the communication uh, because everybody is speaking the same language. Either we are talking about a specific component of the or the parts of the component or even specific color on, or spacing. Everything has its own name and everyone uses the same language, the same names. And by all of you, uh, I mean whole team. It's as we will know in a second, uh, because uh, design system users are also product owners, business analysts, and front-end developers, all kinds of developers, UX designers, and so on. Uh, yeah, so this is what design system is, and let's start with the, with the more practical knowledge, uh, how to prepare to, to, to plan your design system. Let's start with uh, defining where are we at, uh, where are you at? Uh, maybe it may be pretty obvious that this is the thing you need to start with, but uh, yeah, it's still really important. Why? Because knowing where you're at uh, allows you uh, to know if you have to uh, inherit something. Uh, maybe there is a superior system that needs you, that you and your product have to adjust to. Or maybe there's a there are general brand uh, brand guidelines defined, and maybe you should make a connection to other products that you have. Maybe you need, need to, to prepare for upcoming changes. So this is why it's important to know where you you and your product are currently at. And the brand architecture is a thing that uh, may help you with it. Uh, let's there I will pre present you three basic models of brand architecture and uh, we'll see how it can uh, help you with defining uh, your, your design systems. So first, first one is a branded house, uh, for example, Atlassian. Uh, in this case, you would probably want to have a general consistent design system that uh, is inherited by all the products. And by using Atlassian products, you, are, uh, you probably feel that uh, you are still in the same group of products. Uh, other model of uh, brand architecture is a house of brands with Meta, for example. Uh, in this case, you probably would like to have uh, several design systems or 
maybe some general brand guidelines at the top level and uh, all the products uh, adjusted to them uh, having their own uh, systems or subsystems. So yeah, so this is another model. The last one uh, is the hybrid model. Uh, so there you have uh, like one brand, then you have so, some brands that are inheriting from the main brand guidelines and systems, as well as the other uh, elements, other brands that have their own design system. So in this case, you probably would want to have uh, one extensible bigger system for the brands that are uh, inheriting from this, as well as the each uh, as the other design systems for each each brand that should not uh, inherit from the from the main brand. So to put it in a simple words. Uh, Brand architecture translates to your design system architecture. Okay, so having that, uh, let's think of who are the design system users. And I mean design system users and not the end users of your product, because it's really important to, for you to know uh, the difference between two, those two kinds of users. Distincting them is really important. Uh, this one you can tell. This way you can tell. I mean, if you will know your design system users, you can tell uh, what and how to document, when, where to put the documentation. Uh, you can tell what processes do you need, or what libraries do you need to release, uh, for who. You can also roughly estimate the scope of the work. So there are more users than only front-end and uh, design. In fact, there is a myth that design system users uh, are only front-end developers and the design uh, team members. Uh, but yeah, it's a myth. Uh, in fact, there are lots of more users of the design systems. Uh, for example, let's start with the developers. Uh, they are not only front-end developers. In fact, uh, your UIs can be also developed on a .NET or, or Java uh, environments. So they are also the users of the design systems. Even backend de developers can be sometimes users of the design system. Uh, business analysts, uh, they will need to know the correct naming of each item. Uh, they would like to communicate with you with the language that is known by everyone. So they are also design system users. Product owners, they need to know what's available to achieve quickly. Uh, they are also uh, they they also want to know uh, the language. So, yeah, they are also design system users. Quality assurance to know if all the elements work correctly. Uh, to, if if they are containing any bugs or whatever, uh, they also are users of the design system, so they know if everything works fine. Also, there are third parties because sometimes you want to outsource some job and expect uh, that it will be consistent visually with the rest of your application or applications. So yeah, they are also uh, users of the design system and you have to keep in mind that outsourcing, you know, the, the communication between outsourced team and uh, your inside team will not be as great. So. This tells us that we have, we have to focus on the documentation, for example. And uh, lots of other things, uh, lots of other users of the design system uh, that I cannot think of now. So, yeah. Okay. So, what are the possible ways to start with your design system? Uh, knowing all previous things uh, allows you to decide which uh, way you could start with. Uh, each, of course, will have will have its pros of, uh, and cons. The first one is um, using existing design systems. So existing using uh, using existing design system uh, like Carbon or Atlassian uh, design guidelines or Lightning from Salesforce. You can obviously use their design system uh, along with the uh, guidelines, patterns, and so on. 
And the pros of such approach will be low costs. You don't have to build separate team. You don't have to build separate product. You're just using what you have. Uh, other pros is a short time to market because yeah, as previously, you already have everything. So you just can, can ship the, the volume. You have also already all assets ready to use. Uh, either those are components or either those are the patterns, guidelines. You're just going with what you have. Uh, there are also cons of such approach, uh, approaches. And one of the biggest uh, cons for this is uh, that this approach is barely customizable. There are some customiza customization options, but uh, they are like really limited. Uh, and also, this is quite a big con for this. You can be accidentally mistaken uh, with the origin brand of the design system. So yeah. Another approach is to have is to build your own design system based on the libraries. And actually, this uh, point, this option has uh, two variants. Uh, I will go through them quickly. Uh, first one is build your design system based on available libraries, uh, like web component libraries. Uh, it works best when we're having a design system aimed for the web platforms. Uh, because there are quite a lot of lot of ready component libraries. Uh, then you will probably extend and customize such library for your case. You'll add it. You'll add the design tokens libraries, uh, component li sorry pattern libraries, and so on. And you'll end up with a pretty complete uh, design system. So the pros are that uh, you have relative, re relatively short time to market. Uh, you have also quite big base of uh, components to start with. Also, some of the libraries include uh, design kits, which will uh, be appreciated by the design, system, design team. Uh, the cons are that uh, there probably at some time will be some issues with the customization and alignment to the design system documentations. And uh, also there will be dependent, uh, I mean, your system, your design system will be dependent on external, external source, sources and licenses. Uh, yeah, but we also have a second uh, variant of this uh, approach of this option. So you can use uh, existing solutions, paid services like, for example, Telerik. Uh, it works better if you have to support uh, different platforms like uh, web platforms like Java, like .NET, uh, WinUI, or UWP. Uh, so the pros are that it's relatively short time to market. Uh, you need smaller design system team uh, than you would need to create your design system from, from the beginning. And the big pro for this is that it supports uh, multiple platforms right away. Well, the Cons are that costs are high. You're paying for a developer license, so yeah, so this is quite a big con. And uh, although it may be still a better solution for you, yeah. And another con for this is that design, so, uh, design options uh, may be limited uh, by existing components. So the third options, third option is to creating your own design system. And uh, in my opinion, this is the best and the most exciting, obviously, uh, option here, because here you have uh, full control of every design system aspect. With this approach, uh, you can scale as you grow, you can start uh, really small and you can go if you're, when your product and design system together will grow. Uh, for example, you can start with a simple single component library and then build design kits and patterns uh, or guidelines around it. Or you can start with general guidelines uh, and then extend your libraries uh, with the elements as you'll need it. Or you can start with the design tokens and then you can build design kits and then, you know, you get the point. The options are unlimited. Uh, well, it's all dependent, of course, of uh, on resources that you currently have. Well, the pros for this approach is that you have a tailor-made design system. You have exactly what you need and nothing else. 
Uh, other pros for that is that it's fully scalable in terms of product as well as in terms of the team. You can grow your team if you need some resources. Yeah. You have full control over all aspects of, the, of your design system. And also you have best communication since probably it will be maintained by, by your, your team. So yeah, you have the best communication options uh, inside design system team. Cons are that, uh, well, it takes time to build design system. Uh, so yeah, so time to market may be, may be um, a con. And also, Con maybe that you need experienced team, yeah, because experienced team will be needed for this approach. Although I think that uh, you already know who to call for that. So yeah. So let's go with the team. Uh, what options do you even have? What what may you need? What skills do you need? Uh, and we're talking about the skills because uh, there's a simple reason for that. Uh, because obviously we have we can have multi-talented people, and the design system is an interdisciplinary field. So, yeah, we'll talk about skills, not the people. Uh, for example, there are developers that are strongly interested with the user experience. There are, for example, user uh, experience designers that are are really into UI, uh, or accessibility specialists that are good at testing, or developers that know how to do devil things. Uh, yeah, you get the point. Uh, but first, before we go with the, any hard skill, we'll, um, we need good communication skills. And this may sound like a cliche, but this is really important because communication lies in the heart, in the middle of uh, every design system. And this is really important. And that's why it's important to choose people that are kind of pleasant, that uh, are communicating clearly, that are open to others points of view, and uh, they're having everything this in mind, they still are specific and uh, yeah, clear and specific. Okay, so let's start with, start with the UI design skills. Uh, they, are, they will be needed for creating beautiful and pixel perfect controls and the other components. Um, they will also be uh, necessary when it comes to design kit maintenance. Also, they will be probably illustrating patterns and guidelines. Um, so yeah, I think personally that there is a no start without user, user uh, interface uh, skills. Uh, we also have uh, UX uh, design and research uh, skills. Mm, for best experience for of, for the user and I mean both kind of users uh, for the design system users and for the end users of the application. Uh, sorry. Uh, design system users by improving the documentation and uh, as well as the end users of the products by improving specific components. It mm, also it's needed for. Uh, developing patterns and guidelines for best user experience possible. Another skill is uh, accessibility research uh, skills uh, that they will be needed for using uh, reviewing the components for accessibility, creating patterns and guidelines. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, content design skills. Uh, they'll be needed for caring about documentation, release notes, and the news, the communication with the uh, design system users, especially when there is a large group of the users. Obviously, we will need also some programming skills uh, for different platforms. Uh, they, will help, they will be helpful from building and maintaining uh, libraries and uh, yeah, libraries and the tools. Uh, yeah, and we need uh, all kinds of uh, programming skills for different platforms. Uh, we also need the quality assurance skills uh, needed for caring for the best quality of the design system and its elements uh, and uh, preventing uh, regression. Uh, we will also probably need some DevOps skills uh, that will help us uh, automating processes like deployment, building, uh, conversions, formatting, 
uh, and so on. And they were also uh, helpful when maintaining and improving tools. There are also some uh, additional roles that uh, I haven't mentioned yet, but uh, obviously if your business, if your uh, team grows, there, there will be someone who will need to take care of it. So product owner uh, and take care of whole product. There will be also business anal analyst needed uh, in some, at some point, and he will filter and translate all the incoming requirements for, for the team. Uh, also, we will probably need some Scrum Master to keep all the process, processes in right order. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, and to have a quick recap, um, first, it's good to uh, know where you're at. Uh, what are the dependence, dependencies uh, of your project? Uh, do you have to inherit something from other platforms or brands or whatever? and also what platforms do you have to support. Uh, next important thing is to identify your users. Uh, thanks to this, you will know uh, who will be using your design system, uh, how to prepare documentation. Uh, are there any third parties? Yeah. Another important thing is uh, thinking, how can you start? Which option you will choose? Either you will go with uh, creating your own design system or you will decide to build your design system based on uh, existing libraries. Yeah. And the last part is you should decide what skills and uh, what uh, talents do you need uh, to your in your design system team to achieve all those things. And this would be all. Uh, thank you for your time. I hope uh, I helped you with some decisions or with your plan. Uh, again, I'm uh, Jakub Hajduk. I'm a design system expert in PGS software. If you want to talk or have any thoughts, please send me our email. Thank you.